Hello and welcome back to another vintage hairstyling tutorial. My name is Tessa and in today's video I'm going to show you another pin curling tutorial with the pin curl sculpture tool. I'm going to try and make this tutorial as beginner friendly as possible and basically take you through my wet set process when I'm doing a pin curl setting pattern. Now of course if you prefer to pin curl with your fingers that is up to you. I am no good at pin curling with my fingers as much as I have tried. And if that is your foolproof method, then maybe this video is not for you. So essentially when you are creating pin curls, you're wrapping your hair around your finger, forming a curl, and then pinning it to your scalp and setting it for an amount of time, forming a curl. Now what this tool will do is it kind of replaces your finger and you wrap the curl around either side of the tool creating either a very small pin curl or a finger sized pin curl. Think of this tool as a finger. The sculpture tool is made of plastic, so do be careful not to drop it. I did drop it on some tile floor and lost one of the little teeth. It's not as durable as the roll and go hair tool. Other than that, I haven't had any problems with it, and I've traveled with it, I've taken it places. So the products I'll be utilizing for this tutorial consist of the Pin Curl Sculpture Tool, my setting lotion mixed with water in a spray bottle, a spray bottle of just water to keep my hair damp, some duckbill clips for sectioning, and pin curl clips, and a comb. My hair is freshly washed, and I would say it is kind of still damp, I do have a spray bottle to keep saturating it when I need to. So let's get into the actual tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is create my hair sections. So I've already created my hair parting. I usually do a side part right out of the shower when my hair is still wet because that part will start to form and it will want to stay with you until you wash your hair again. To keep it simple, I'm just going to do standard pin curls for the base of the hair and then I think I'll do some standing pin curls for the bang section just to show you how to do both pin curling methods. First thing we can do is create our parting and separate the front from the back. So now I've made my ear to ear part and we can tie back this super large section that's going to be very intense to pin curl. And then we're gonna divide this large section into two. So see, we wanna kind of measure our rows before I create the finite section. So what I'm hoping, I would like to have one row here, one row here. So I need to make this one a little bit longer. These are kind of the easiest sections to start with. And let's divide it in two. Pull it back. Now depending on your hair party, you might need two or three rows. You can get away with just two on each side since the bang section will have three. So you're gonna to wanna to make a square. It can be at an angle, it doesn't have to be completely perpendicular to your face. Now my hair is kind of dried, so I'm gonna spray it with some water, and then I'm gonna spray it with my setting lotion. Comb it all through. Grab the tool, and I'm using the large end. And my hair is quite long now since the last time I used it, but I should still be able to use it. Just make sure that end is folded in and hidden nicely. You can kind of stick your thumb in there and grab with your nails. Take your pin curl clip and 
find a good place to dig in there. There you go. Oh, you just have to do that like 50 more times. If you're using bobby pins instead of duckbill clips, you can use two bobby pins per pin curl in a crisscross shape. If your hair is shorter, you may want to use the smaller side of the tool, especially in these front baby hair sections. And what you want to avoid is these little, little pieces trying to come out. So you can always try and use the smaller side if you're having a hard time getting those little baby hairs in there. But it will make a tighter curl. row. I'm going to spritz it with some water, just the end there. My ends are starting to dry. Then the setting lotion. I always like to comb it through after I apply the setting lotion and make the hair strands as flat like a ribbon. Comb it through as much as you need to get the hair flat. And take those ends and make sure they all roll up nicely. You can use oh. I should get some end papers. <laughs> I think when my hair was shorter and nicely, freshly cut, I didn't have these problems. But the longer your hair gets, the more straggly your ends are, the more you probably need end papers. This is a very small, fine section consisting of a lot of broken little hairline pieces. So I'm gonna use the smaller side the tool again. Now we have our first section complete and we can do the same process. On the other side, I'm not going to film it, it's the same thing. So now we can work on this bang section. I'm going to spray this with some water and divide it in two. straight up. And roll around the tool. I like to roll back and then I start turning it at the end. Take your pin curl clip. You can joust that pin curl clip right through the center of the barrel and make sure it's secure. And we're going to repeat this process five more times. For the bang section, I find it's easiest to work back to front. Working in rows and keeping all of those sections even. Today I'm doing three rows for the bang section with a total of six standing pin curls. The pin curls are rolled back and away from the hair parting and secured in the middle with the duckbill clip. I'm using the large side of the tool to form these pin curls. 
If you're using bobby pins instead of duckbill clips, you may want to try using two bobby pins for a stronger hold. You can place them right through the center, just like the duckbill clips. If you're having trouble securing your curl with your clip or bobby pin, try making your section a little bit smaller. If your curl is too thick, the clip is not going to hold and it may fall out. So now the front section is done, the bangs all in standing pin curls, and the side sections are done. So now we can move on to the back. And usually what I like to do is I start working from either side and I'll just create another row here and then create another here while I can still kind of see in the mirror. What we can start with is basically this row here is gonna continue down behind the ear. A technique that I find very helpful in setting hair is utilizing rows, whether they're horizontal or vertical. This technique will also come in handy when you're wanting to create more of a wave pattern and utilizing opposite direction of pin curls. For the back, I'm going to form vertical rows and work from bottom to top, similar to how we did our bang section. So I've made another row here behind this one. You may find it easier to work from bottom to top, so I've pulled back the top section. I've utilized horizontal rows for the back as well, but I found that vertical rows are easier for me to keep under control. Of course, your setting method is entirely up to you, so just do what you find works best. And you will probably find that out through lots of trial and error. And to keep things from getting complicated, all of the pin curls in the back curl towards the left side of the face. I saved for last is the rest of what would be the bang section, but instead of doing stand up pin curls there, I'm just going to do the flat ones. And we're going to lay them on top of the rest of those curls in the back. Now that we have all of these pin curls in our head, we can check to make sure there aren't any wonky ones. If you see a curl and you just don't like the way it looks, just do it again. The back is very tedious and tiresome and it's easy to get kind of lazy back there. Honestly, my suggestion to you if you are new to pin curling or you just don't want to spend this much time on it, pin curl the front of your hair, like those front few sections we did, and then just do your rollers in the back. So sometimes you might have to go back and create smaller sections. With this tool, smaller is going to be better than bigger. Especially with the long hair, you're going to roll it up so many times on top of itself that the curl can become so dense that the pin curl clip won't even fit over it. So if you're having a problem with your pin curl clip clamping down the hair because the section is too big, just make another one or we'll try to make it smaller. Last time in my other pin curl tutorial, I did a hairnet over the clips, and I'm sure as you notice, it's really difficult to get the net off the clips the next day, so I'm going to try something a little different, and that is I'm going to set it with my slumber net 
And then when I go to bed, I'm gonna put my pillow scarf over the slumber net. So the slumber net is great for right now. turns out tomorrow for the brush out.